Melody.
and Susan, thank you.
do playing games, you have access to like 730 female playwrights, right? There's no excuse anymore to write there. But that's, you know, we, we love what you guys did. We're, we're honored to have, you know, done this to help. So, Mark, and I hope it brings more people also just in the play exchange generally, and maybe just search women or, you know, yeah. it's a rising tide. Women or players of color or, you know, or those of us who are, you know, anyone. Or really, or anyone. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs>
something that um, is not changing and is leaving you behind, or feeling like you, since you've just begun your career, are, are seeing so many doors open, and, and look fewer restrictions, and feel like you, um, the beneficiary of this,
play you're talking about, about the place that the yeah. group by men yeah. and women. That was part of her early study. Uh, so she did a study in 2009 that, that did an initial sort of pro <coughs> to count idea. Um, Emily Sands from Princeton, who was, a, was then a student of Stephen Levitt. So this is all like heavily <coughs> science approved, not just like us calling people. So <laughs> that, that count, which we'll talk about some other time or now? I don't know. I guess now, right? Sure. Okay. <laughs> so the count was a huge project in which the, we monitored Julia and Rebecca Stump of the Guild and literally an army of volunteers. We twisted arms for <laughs> to get people <laughs> our <laughs> All right. Yeah. We so first of all the, the Dramas Guild Regional Rep surveyed all the theaters in all the theaters in America and we counted the productions that went more than that were twenty one days or more. That's what you had to do to count. Also you in order to count you had to have not died before 1965. <laughs> so if you died before 1965, like check off, <laughs> you would not be counted in the cap. You, because this is a contemporary book, and so Shakespeare is not there. You know. <clears throat> then you know. So uh, what? Then we had three years of results, and those three years were counted and vetted and cleaned up, and phone calls were made, and is this really the scene you did? And, did you really, and what were, who were the protagonists in these plays, and what is the gender, and what is the race, and what is the, and so there's this, this massive now amount of information that Julia and her team at the Guild um, created, and we're going to report on that officially at the Dramas Guild National Conference in July, which is tomorrow, and, um, <laughs> and, and that, and give a, a huge presentation. Um, the numbers are, <coughs> and, and there's, there's more information coming. In other words, the race numbers, the, no, well, the race numbers we know, but the, the, um, the protagonist numbers, which are pretty interesting, those, all, those are numbers are coming, but basically the facts are in. And the facts are grim, but better. <laughs> was five years ago when we started, when the Lilies started, which 17%. So now, you know, now the numbers are up to 25% in New York City and big cities, <coughs> including some other incredible successes. Seattle, you know, there's some cities that are just really doing well, I think, inside of these county rooms, because of somebody. I don't know who it is out in Seattle but, or who it is in Chicago, but there's some person on the ground there making a big difference. And whether that's a rep or whether that's a human or whether that's an artistic <laughs> I mean, a, I mean, a, not a human member, but I mean, a, a person, they, a, like a board member, civilian. Yeah, there's no thing. City and in big cities, uh, in the Northeast, in the in the West, in the, in the Pacific West, you know, we're doing better. But twenty percent, just just say nationally, twenty percent still means. Let's just say I'm preempting myself about my speech at lunch today, but that still means that four out of every five sentences you hear are said by men. That would be a really weird world to miss in, right? In four out of every five sentences you hear said by men. Well, that's what that's what it is in the theater. Four out of every five sentences you hear, and that's been true, you know, for the history of the American theater. So this is like this is a serious thing to contemplate. So this is what makes your work and the Kilroy work and the work, you know, of every individual woman that still goes like, I am talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> right? Is 
on the record. Are there recorders in the room? No. You can't tell this story. Have <laughs> <laughs> uh, they recorded? Oh, or how long did you record this thing? Catch you. Catch you. And what happens with writers with children just don't apply. 
or they don't go, or they or they give up and think, oh, I have to decide between my children and my work. Well, that's not a choice. I'm going to stay home with my kids. Yeah. Or if I take my kids to this colony, then they're going to end up in some house over on some other street, and they're going to be with a nanny, and I'm not going to see them. And the schedule. I mean, <coughs> Manny Greenfield up at Lloydstown, Phil Kimberg at Sundance. I mean, everybody is in this with us. Wendy Goldberg at the O'Neill, we are, everybody is on this family friendly colony. And it has to happen. It cannot happen. And men who are in charge of their childcare cannot be forced to leave their kids behind. They need programming <coughs> that allows them to do their work and be with their kids in the summertime. Because anything else is just ridiculous. And that, that's. <laughs>
And in that sense, oh, I feel like our district directors would be like, oh, right.
that is just embarrassing for a theater. Well, and then, can I answer that? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, uh, I know, I break the rules. Um, I break the rules. Michael, we're going to we're going to we're going to give the guild and the lilies are giving an exclusive to the New York Times to break the news of the count and the details of the count and the specifics of the count, the cities, the regions, the whatever, <coughs> and then the results for a particular theater. Like the, if you wanted to check on the Guthrie, you could, as I did last week, check. Uh, uh, <laughs> show about lesbians. 
and one of my agents dumped me, he's gay, because he thought this will never get done. And then I, of course, being, you know, a sad woman, just, <laughs> I went to bed. series. I didn't even know what it was. It taught me how to schmooze with people. I put not just Facebook, but that is so encouraging, but all of the web and the internet, and that show has over 40 million views now, and it won the first Writers Guild of America Award. Now I'm back with a new play, and I'm like, okay, I may be that little scared. I don't, you know, how do I break through this, and why, why is it so hard for me? Part of the reason now, I'm looking at it, to add to the parody issue, is how old I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And maybe in the new play, the age of the characters in it. Yeah. There are women in their 60s, God help me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Everything you have to say, and, and it is, it's, it's, it's such value to me. But it's really, really interesting for all of us to look at in our lives. You know, what has affected and how we have affected. Anyway. Uh, it's just so interesting because who buys tickets to the theater? Yes. <laughs> 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 or women, uh, you know, literary managers, because afraid to, you know, to upset the apple cart, I think that's changing, but maybe not. I mean, that's just something else to be considered here. You guys, we have, like, three more minutes, and Thank you. 
and say, I'll subscribe if you do plays by women. So then it filters up, and finally, the boss screams that because of little person who goes like, oh, look, we just got this, it, you know, or we're getting 15 of these. So he's saying, <laughs> when, when you write to them, directly write to them back and say, you don't get my money if I don't get the kind of season I am interested in. I want to, uh, Dave's writing question is very important. I want to skip to this, though, because... Well, and it does relate, because, uh, uh, so one of the things about unconscious bias, which is terrific phrase, but one of the key paths of that is unconscious. And people are, I think I saw someone who said like two, people, two thirds of people are able to identify unconscious bias in others, but very bad at relate to your story about Oscar Eustace and this crumb. Like, uh, the, the, the Mike Daisy question got him to, to yeah. recognize the unconscious nature of the bias, right? So, I guess in terms of turning this into an action, Oscar will listen to Lisa Kronk, right? Is there a way to systematize those one-on-one -on -one conversations so that, like, I'm going to identify and deputize the Lisa Kronk for the world for those are <laughs> Because everyone can see this data and they can see the numbers and they can see how all those other artistic directors should be making different choices. 